Okay, so in the last video we talked a, a bit about the difference between UDP and TCP and you know why those two protocols and how those two protocols were different where UDP, you know, doesn't supply a lot of bells and whistles or frills and you know is <clears throat> kind of a simpler protocol, whereas TCP provides a few more bells and whistles. Um, and we saw the difference between those two headers. Now we're going to, in order to, you know, send an HTTP request, which is, you know, ultimately our goal, to send an HTTP request from my computer through the internet to a Google server and receive an HTTP response. This is our goal. we will need to establish a TCP connection. And so establishing a TCP connection is something that UDP doesn't do. So we didn't do this in the DNS video because UDP is just simple protocol, doesn't allow for a you know, shared state between two computers unless you build that in at the application layer. But the transport layer doesn't provide it to us. So we just send a UDP packet in, we hope that it gets to its final destination and we hope that the response comes back to us and arrives at us. Whereas with TCP, we know we are guaranteed that so long as the, you know, all the stuff in here, the internet, is working, you know, there is a path between me and Google and all the computers here don't just all suddenly go offline. As long as all that is true, then TCP guarantees that my data will get there and get back. And part of being able to provide that guarantee is that TCP has to set up a connection between these two computers. So in addition to being able to shuttle the HTTP data, remember, you know, we have a TCP header followed by our HTTP data, which is, you know, itself has headers and data. So in addition to shuttling this HTTP data, the stuff in here in this TCP header that's sent along with every HTTP request helps us manage the data. It's like metadata about this data, data about the connection. Okay, so in order to establish a TCP connection, there is a process called the three-way handshake, which maybe you've heard of, okay? So I'm gonna just draw me over here on my laptop. And this line represents time, time coming down. And everything in between here is gonna be queries sent from me to Google, all right? And the very first thing that I'll send to Google, the first part of the three-part handshake is a request called the SYN request, short for synchronize, okay? So I send the SYN request and this establishes some important information about me to Google. And it basically says, hey, Google, I would like to start communicating with you over TCP. I'd like to establish a connection. And I send them a starting sequence number and my port number, and all of this is wrapped in an IP packet, so they get my IP address. And I tell them some additional things like, you know, my congestion window, or sorry, not my congestion window, my receive window value, which is the amount of data that my computer thinks it's able to process, you know, at a time. So this is a set amount of data and Google can't send me more than this amount of data until after they've heard me acknowledge that I've received some of their data. So, you know, it's like a, a little window and if Google sends me a packet that fills up part of that window and they can now only send me this much data until after I say, hey, I acknowledge that I've received this data. And when that happens, 
the receive window will go back to its full size. I'll just erase all that. Okay, so I send some important starting values about me, including sequence number and a receive window, and then Google sends back what is called the SYNAC request, where they acknowledge, okay, great, you know, I accept that you want to communicate with me over TCP, so we'll do that, and they send me their starting sequence number, and they send me an acknowledgement acknowledging that they've received this sequence here, okay? And then finally, after these two requests are made, I can send a request which is called the AC, and these are the three parts of the three-way handshake, the TCP handshake. And this acknowledgement frequently also comes with the first packet of payload data, okay? And this payload data might be an HTTP request, as we'll see if in the next video, if we're doing HTTPS, then this first bit of payload data will actually be the first part of data from the S, which is TLS used to be SSL, handshake. Okay, so there's another handshake that we have to do to get encryption, which is what transport layer security offers us. And that's what the S in HTTPS stands for. It used to stand for SSL, but now it stands for TLS. That's confusing. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it in the next video. But the first bit of payload data can be sent <clears throat> along with the acknowledgement. And the whole purpose of setting this up is so that in the future, after we've got this connection established between me and Google, primarily it's to serve two big purposes that TCP offers. The first is reliable transport, which means every packet of data that I send either will be received by Google or I will know that they haven't received it. Okay, so TCP will keep trying until Google gets the data. So here's an example. Let's say I send a packet of data and it gets almost there. Oops, but it dies right there. So some router was unable to handle my packet or something happened and it got corrupted in transit, but whatever, the data doesn't arrive at Google. Unlike UDP, with TCP, I'll just wait a period of time and then I will retransmit that data because I haven't received, so let's call this packet one, I'll resend packet one. When Google does receive packet one, since, you know, I didn't hear that they, I didn't hear an acknowledgement from Google, so they didn't receive that packet, so I waited for a timeout and I tried again. If they receive that data, they will send back an acknowledgement of that packet. So I sent a packet with a sequence number and it had a length, and they'll send an acknowledgement number that corresponds to the sequence number of this packet and the length of that packet. So they'll say, I received this amount of data, and then I know, okay, cool, I can send packet two. And it's a little bit more complicated. I'll send you some resources about how the nitty gritty details of this sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers work. But their purpose mainly is to service this, where if I send a packet and it gets dropped or corrupted in transit, I'll wait. And if Google receives a packet, they will acknowledge. And once they've acknowledged that they've received some packet of data, I know that I can continue sending the next next piece of data. Okay, so that's the first big thing that TCP gives us, and it's important that we establish this connection so that we can establish our sequence numbers, so that we can acknowledge each other's data that's being sent back and forth. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the second big thing TCP does for us, which is congestion control and controlling the speed at which data is transmitted between the two parties, us and Google.